For years, the global conversation around clean hydrogen has revolved around one core assumption. If we want truly green hydrogen, we need massive amounts of renewable electricity powering massive arrays of electrolyzers. That framework has shaped billions of dollars of investment, dozens of national hydrogen strategies, and the entire way policymakers think about decarbonizing industries like steel, ammonia, shipping, and heavy transport. But what if the clean hydrogen equation is missing an entirely different energy input, one that's abundant, often wasted, and in some regions, practically free? This is the angle that new hydrogen has brought into the spotlight with Thermoloop, a thermochemical approach that challenges the industry's electrification-first mindset. Instead of asking how to bring down the cost of electricity, new hydrogen is asking a different question. What if we bypass electricity altogether and use heat to produce hydrogen at scale? To understand the significance of this shift, we need to look at where hydrogen costs come from. Traditional green hydrogen relies on electrolysis, a mature but still expensive technology. Electrolyzers need high purity water, expensive membranes, and constant maintenance. But the biggest problem is electricity. In many markets, electricity represents 60 to 80% of the cost of producing green hydrogen. That means the economics of green hydrogen are fundamentally tied to electricity prices, grid congestion, renewable intermittency, and infrastructure availability. Even in regions with good solar or wind resources, achieving consistently low power costs is difficult. Electrolyzers running at low capacity factors become expensive. In some regions, the grid simply cannot supply the necessary energy without years of upgrades. This is the bottleneck that Thermoloop attempts to sidestep by rethinking the energy input entirely. Thermoloop is based on thermochemical water-splitting cycles. Instead of running electricity through a membrane to split water, these cycles use high temperatures to drive chemical reactions that separate hydrogen and oxygen. In the simplest terms, a solid material is heated until it reacts with water vapor and releases hydrogen. Then the material is regenerated in a separate step using heat returning it to its original state so the cycle can continue indefinitely. The only inputs are heat and water. No electrolyzers, no high-voltage electrical systems, and no massive dependence on renewable electricity. If the heat source is clean, the hydrogen is clean. If the heat source is cheap, the hydrogen is cheap. And this is where new hydrogen's approach becomes interesting, because heat, unlike electricity, is available in many places where renewables are not. Industrial facilities across the world waste extraordinary amounts of high temperature heat. Refineries, steel facilities, chemical plants, and even power plants release energy that often cannot be economically used. Geothermal regions offer stable 24-7 thermal output. Concentrated solar systems can produce temperatures far beyond those needed for electrolysis. And perhaps most importantly, nuclear plants, especially next generation SMRS, produce constant high quality heat at scale. New Hydrogen's model is to pair Thermoloop with these heat sources and convert that thermal energy into hydrogen. The heat becomes the fuel and the thermochemical reaction becomes the engine. And because the system does not rely on intermittent renewables, it can theoretically run at full capacity day and night, improving overall hydrogen production economics. New Hydrogen revealed its first breakthrough in mid-2025 when it announced laboratory production of hydrogen using a thermo-loop bench setup. This is far from a commercial plant, but it is a critical step Clean tech breakthroughs always begin in the lab, where materials, catalysts, and reaction cycles are tested under controlled conditions. New Hydrogen has also expanded its intellectual property portfolio, filing multiple provisional patents to protect its thermochemical process. These steps suggest the company sees long-term potential in Thermoloop 
beyond scientific curiosity. They are positioning themselves as the first commercial developer of a heat-driven hydrogen production system targeting mainstream energy markets. However, the real value of Thermoloop emerges not from the lab results, but from its system-level implications. If Thermoloop works at scale, it could fundamentally change where hydrogen plants are built. Instead of needing grid access, high-voltage substations, or massive renewable farms, hydrogen plants could be co-located with heat sources. Nuclear facilities could allocate a portion of thermal energy to hydrogen production, improving their revenue diversification. Industrial plants could capture and use waste heat that would otherwise be lost, turning a liability into a hydrogen stream. Geothermal regions could become hydrogen hubs without needing new electrical infrastructure, and concentrated solar plants could shift from electricity generation to thermal hydrogen, potentially lowering their cost structure. But it's equally important to acknowledge the challenges. Thermochemical hydrogen production is not a new concept. Researchers have studied cycles like the sulfur iodine cycle and metal oxide cycles for decades. The major obstacles have always been material durability, reaction stability, equipment cost, and safety at high temperatures. To convert these reactions into a commercial plant, materials must withstand thousands of cycles without degrading. Reactors must operate safely under continuous high temperature conditions. Integration with heat sources must be efficient and reliable. These challenges are real and will determine whether Thermoloop becomes a commercial technology or remains a laboratory achievement. Another challenge is market adoption. The hydrogen industry is heavily shaped by subsidies and government frameworks that assume electrolysis is the default technology. Billions in incentives are tied to electrolyzer-based production. Policymakers have written electrolyzer-specific rules into tax credits, financing structures, and regulatory guidance. For Thermoloop to gain mainstream traction, it will need to operate within or alongside these frameworks, or policymakers will need to update them to recognize heat-driven hydrogen pathways. This is not impossible, but it requires time, data, and industry engagement. Despite these hurdles, Thermoloop represents an important reminder that the hydrogen economy is not limited to one production pathway. The future of hydrogen will likely be diverse, with different regions adopting different technologies based on local resources. Some regions will excel with wind-powered electrolysis. Others will favor solar and batteries. And still others, especially those with nuclear heat, geothermal resources, or concentrated industrial heat, may find heat-driven hydrogen to be more economical. In that context, New Hydrogen's Thermoloop is not a competitor to electrolysis, but a complementary alternative that fills a gap the industry rarely discusses. If Thermoloop succeeds, it could help unlock hydrogen production in places where renewable electricity is expensive or limited. It could give nuclear plants a new purpose in a decarbonized grid. It could reduce the strain on electrical infrastructure. And most importantly, it could bring down the cost of clean hydrogen by attacking the single largest cost driver, power. The next few years will determine whether new hydrogen can transition from laboratory demonstration to industrial proof of concept. If they do, the hydrogen landscape could look very different from the electricity-centered model the world has been building toward. For developers, investors, and policymakers, the message is simple. Keep an eye on heat. In the race to scale clean hydrogen, electrons may not be the only answer.